I've recently been living in Florida and started hanging out at the local kava tea bars which have become pretty popular across the state. The kava root comes from Pacific islands such as Tonga and has been used as a social drink across the Pacific for thousands of years. Kava was brought to the United States in the early 2000s and the first kava bar opened up in Boca Raton, Florida in 2002. Since coming to the kava bars, I've met some really interesting people and found a welcoming and open-minded culture. So when I needed to head up to New England for a wedding, I thought I'd try and find a local kava bar in the area. To my surprise, there was only one in Nashua, New Hampshire that had just opened up. Naturally, I went to check it out and see what the story behind New England's first kava bar entailed. So my name is Greg Gately, the uh, owner of Root Awakening Kava Bar, New England's first kava bar, born and raised California. Moved out here when I was 18 for school, met my wife in college, and uh, nothing ever goes as planned. Still out here. Uh, was living in Massachusetts for quite some time. Moved up here about a year and a half ago. Bought my first house in New Hampshire. So. A lot of people ask, why did you pick New Hampshire of all places? Pure convenience. So I was working in corporate sales for the last 12 years. Um, my industry got disintegrated when coronavirus hit. Um, I was in sales and my best friend on the West Coast I grew up with um, in the Bay Area, he owns a lot of bars out there. He also distributes. Um, so he's been wanting me to open the first Kava bar in New England. and all the stars aligned. So we had a, you know, a, a powwow and we sat down and kind of ironed out a lot of details and June 28th is when it all started. I've been drinking kava for about really heavy now for the past three years. First time I had it was about 2015. Um, but I started drinking when I was working and I had some of my best sales days when I was rooted. Um, meaning, you know, not drunk, not high, but we get rooted when we drink kava. Getting rooted, you get this calm, relaxed, euphoric feeling where you get focused, dialed into whatever it is, that, the task at hand. So I was in corporate sales, I got rooted, and I would, I was working from home, of course, I wouldn't be sipping on it in the office, um, and I would have some of my best conversations. Um, Kava acts as a social lubricant, so it really kind of enhanced that whole entire experience. And I've had some of my best sales day while being fully rooted. Now, currently, I drink it when I'm behind this bar, but I'm also getting my MBA. So if I have a really hard paper, a milestone um, that I have to accomplish, I make it a point to get as rooted as possible. <laughs> and I get super focused and some of my best quality work happens. My name's Danielle. I'm a kava tender here at Root Awakening. I um, met Greg uh, two months ago and I was looking for a job after leaving my position teaching dance, which I've done for the past 12 years. And I was looking for something that was unique and fulfilling and exciting. And uh, so when I found out about kava, I'd never heard about it before. And I thought that it was just such a cool thing and it was something I definitely wanted to be a part of and I loved that it was the first one in New England and excited to you know be a part of something that so many people in this area have never experienced. We get so many different kinds of people in this bar it's really remarkable it's like a melting pot of just so many different personalities and uh, the most amazing part about it is watching those people talk with each other sitting here at the bar and it, it's people that would never talk to each other out on the streets. It's just wonderful and it, Kava brings out this vulnerable side of people and the conversation here is just, it's never the same from day to day. There's just something 
like oddly magical about the kava root. When you consume it, um, it, it just puts you in this relaxed state of mind. It, someone once said it's like meditating with your eyes open and they were so on point with that. Um, it just brings out this, this part of you that you don't, you don't normally get to experience. Yeah, I 100% concur. Um, what I like to say is it, it provides that same type of atmosphere a bar does. Um, I knew it was really nice and unique when I had, it was Father's Day. I had a father and son come in and they wanted to try something new. So they sat down, they got rooted, and you can see just the genuine bonding. But people of all shapes, sizes, and forms um, come here and just kind of interact care freely where they're their natural self where they kind of hang up any kind of ego um, there's no negativity in this barn hasn't happened yet um, I have one rule it's you know positive energy only but I don't even think I need to even make that a rule it's just so natural the conversations that come and they manifest are so grassroots and just so naturally um, provoked and the directions that they go is just in a very very honest and true place from everyone speaks from the heart um, there's no judgment judgment here um, so I think that also brings in that that regular crowd they like that it's a good refreshing feeling of having a nine-to-five or you know you're outside of these windows and doors you know you're always in a world that's continuously, I would say, judging at all times. Um, and if it's not judging you, you're judging yourself or you're judging someone else. That kind of stops at the door. Um, you would think that for something this naturally powerful and helping and uplifting to the community would be something, you know, uh, greeted with open arms. It was quite the contrary. Um, just because it's a, it's, it's an alternative to. And, and it's not a medicine, I'm not a doctor by any means, but it is used in alternative holistic medicine approach. I have customers that have suffered from MS, lupus, hooked on any possible substance you could think of. And this root, this powerful ancient root, kava, has helped them wean off of that. The government didn't want it coming in, let's be quite honest. That's how it was, they're like, you know, this whole voodoo lounge place that you have here isn't making it to these streets. So. We ended up figuring it out. So, I mean, I had no idea what this was until about a month ago. And um, I had just recently stopped drinking, uh, drinking alcohol specifically, just to kind of slow down and to, uh, you know, take a break from it. And so my friends actually did some research and they found this kava bar conveniently located, you know, a few minutes from my place. And uh, so next day I tried it out and you know, I fell in love with the vibe, I fell in love with the products. Really enjoy uh, the owner, Greg, he's a great guy. It's uh, nothing too overwhelming, but it's, it's definitely noticeable. Um, again, it's just calming, it's relaxing on the mind, on the body. I enjoy the atmosphere, I enjoy the people that come through here. Um, good conversations happen, which is nice. Um, and I get that almost placebo f uh, fixation of a bar, you know, because that was my big pastime prior was, you know, going to a bar, drinking some beers, having some cocktails and whatnot. Um, so this serves kind of that same purpose, you know, I'm drinking this substance and I'm chatting with some locals and I get a nice feeling from it, but there's no real repercussions from it. You know, it's all good energy, it's, it's all positive effects and I really, really love that. But what I would say is what it differs from alcohol and in a very good way is, I would say alcohol will make you become someone who you're not. You know, it kind of, it, it's kind of a stimulant and it gets you more energized and it gives you a false sense of confidence. Whereas kava is just gonna make the true self come out and it makes you a little bit more vulnerable, a little bit more open, um, which is a, a great thing to practice because I don't think we do that often enough. Uh, my name is Chico. I'm a, a local chef at one of the uh, Italian restaurants around here. I don't drink alcohol, I don't partake in anything like that, um, and I, I like to come here. It's a good atmosphere, it's good people, good conversation. It's uh, a great, amazing alternative to 
going to hang out in bars. You know, it can't be, it can't be fun when, you know, you're not drinking and, and partaking like that. But um, I, uh, yeah, I work quite a bit and my time off, I try to spend doing something else. I do web design on the side. I, uh, I'm here a lot. I am here a lot. And uh, I'm familiar with Kava from Florida. I used to live in Florida. And uh, there was uh, quite a few Kava spots down there I used to go hang out at because, I, like I said, I don't drink. So I'd like to find something to do on my time off, days off. And uh, in Florida, you have nicer weather. You know, it's more outside time. So they're a little bigger. And uh, I just discovered it that way. You know, so I had friends that were going to them. I got introduced that way. Then I was riding by up here one day and I saw that a, a cob bar was coming to town. So I thought, you know, I'd come say my hellos. I definitely feel like it's gonna take off. And being the first one in New England, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. So the first thing that we do when we come in, obviously when we open up doors, we turn on the sound system, we have a front and a back entrance, we put out our uh, signs and whatnot, um, and then we want to prep up for the public to come in and have some kava. So we have three different blends that we fix up. Um, the more popular of the three is the Fijian blend. Um, but the Fiji, that's for the mind. We have a Vanuatu blend, that's for the body. And then we have a 50-50 blend, and that's from the Tongan Islands. So the same way that this route has been prepped in the islands for the last 3,000 years, we do it the same way here. Um, so I get my gloves on and we do what's called a three-step pour. And we steep it almost like a, a tea into a, a milk bag. And we use lukewarm water. Um, kava lactones, they receive better with uh, warmer water as opposed to cold water. Kava lactones are the active ingredients, which are molecules that bind together. Um, in addition to kava, we also have kombucha. We have this on tap. We get this from East Coast Kombucha. They're located in Norwich, Connecticut. This is our prep table. We'll get some, serve all of our kava with a chaser of pineapple. Uh, it's not the tastiest beverage. We're not seeking out to have a, a tasty cup of, uh, you know, a, a, a daiquiri or a margarita. Best way to take it down, I tell my customers, is maybe two, three big gulps. And that's going to give you um, the fastest way to, to take it down. Is, is almost like a shot. We also have alternative forms of kava, so I can set up a kava latte. But what's also pretty popular amongst kava drinkers are these kava shots. These kava shots are about one and a half kava shells. And this can be mixed. It can be drank straight up like a normal shot. Um, usually it's mixed with a, I like, particularly I like cream soda, um, but you can do any juices, uh, ginger beers, uh, coconut waters, um, but it's just an alternative. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, Wait 20 minutes for fucking <laughs> Have we got to we my part yet? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what do you want, headies or? Cool, we have the bamboo stick. Spears. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Bula. Bula means the celebration of life. It's like aloha in Hawaii. Um, cheers, if you will, um, for the Western culture when they're drinking. Um, Bula is, it's, it's very deep though, in, in the sense, it's just not like cheers. You don't run around and say, hey, cheers, cheers, everyone, cheers. Maybe when you say bye, but. Bula is if you step off the plane or in the Fiji Islands, you're going to hear a lot of bulas. You know, it's like welcome, coming in peace. So last week we uh, celebrated with a, you know, our first month of business opening with um, a live event. We had a rap show, uh, which it was jam packed. It was uh, full capacity the whole time. So uh, we have a rerun with that on September 9th. We have cover bands coming. We have a comedy night show happening. Uh, in a couple weeks, trivia night, um, almost anything just to kind of help gather and create a place where you know folks can socialize without having to consume alcohol. 18 plus as well, so that 18 to 21 crowd gives them something as well to do. Um, but this is a very uh, 
popular place or if you want to come and just relax and kind of play games and enjoy your moments at Rude Awakening in an in a entertaining way. We have a Pac-Man Arcade. And the high score right now is by Danielle, 22,630. Um, then we have Giant Jenga here. Always a very, very surprising noise. It sounds like a, a 1908 earthquake when this thing gets knocked over. We have Giant Connect 4. I love Connect 4 as a kid, so when I saw this, I wanted to bring this into my own bar. Kava bars are pretty notoriously known for being a nice, chill hangout spot. These seats actually recline. Um, and it's just a really plush leather couch that just kind of sets the moment. And when you get really rooted, you kind of just sink in and you don't want to do anything but just relax. So plays perfect with the environment, the ambiance. Um, yeah, I love to just hang out here when it's slow and I'll just kind of kick my feet up and try and close my eyes. But uh, yeah. Um, and then back behind here, um, we, we're going to be extending this out here um, before winter hits we're gonna put a deck out here so that's gonna be phase two of opening um, a lot of folks like to you know go outside drink socialize smoke and uh, we'll provide a deck for that as well so so it's pretty rare that someone likes to spend time at their place of work so you must enjoy the atmosphere oh yeah absolutely yeah i love coming here um, it just it's such a great place to come if you're feeling stressed if you're having a great day it's like no matter what uh the environment kind of just becomes like a second home it's awesome yeah <laughs>